All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about naming acids. So let's start with the acids that are the easiest to name. Those are the binary acids. A binary acid is hydrogen and one other nonmetal. So to name a binary acid, we take the base name of that other nonmetal that's not hydrogen, and we attach the prefix hydro and the suffix ic, plus we tack on the word acid, and we're all done. So HCl, this is a binary acid. It has hydrogen and one other nonmetal. So this would be hydrochloric acid. If I had HBr, we would name that hydrobromic acid. Notice that in each case we have the prefix hydro, the suffix ic, and we tack on the word acid. Pretty straightforward for binary acids. Now let's talk about oxy acids. Oxy acids are composed of hydrogen and an oxy anion. So what is an oxy anion? I'm just talking about polyatomic ions that contain oxygen. Oxygen. So nitrate, sulfate, phosphate, perchlorate, a bunch of different polyatomic anions have oxygen in them and therefore are oxy anions. And the general rule is that if our oxy anion ends in the word and ends in the suffix eight, then we attach the suffix ic to our acid, and then we also tack on the word acid. If our if our oxy anion ends with ite, then we use the suffix ous, us, and we also tack on the word acid. So let's go through some examples of some oxy acids. H2SO4. So let's name this oxy acid. So this is an oxy acid because we have hydrogen and then we have a polyatomic ion that has oxygen in it. So if we are if we identify our polyatomic ion, that is the sulfate ion, which is SO4 2 minus. And since our polyatomic ion ends in 8, we would name this sulfuric acid. So if the, oxy, if the oxy anion, anion ends with 8, we use ic. 8 ic. 8 goes with ic. So let's do another one. How about H2SO3? So now our, our anion is different. It's no longer the sulfate ion. It is now the sulfite ion, which is SO3 2 minus. So now our anion ends with ite, I-T-E. And if our anion ends with ite, then we would call this sulfurous acid. So ite goes with us. So that's basically how to name uh, oxy acids. Um, I think a common mnemonic that people like to use is they just say it all all this in one word. They just say atichitis. And I guess that I guess that sounds like some kind of disease or something like I caught atichitis yesterday. I don't know. But 
you know, it's just a little mnemonic that a lot of students I know use to remember that the oxy oxyanion, if that ends with eight, you do ick, and if it ends with it, then you use it, us. So that is how to name oxy acids. And one last tip I'd like to give before we end the video here is that these acids, both the acids that we, the binary acids and the oxy acids, all of these acids are not ionic. The way that we name them sort of gives us, you know, the notion that they are ionic, but acids are not ionic. They are actually molecular. So if I were to look at these acids under a super sensitive microscope, then I wouldn't see this infinite array of cations and anions that, char that characterizes an ionic compound. Instead, I would see these discrete individual molecules. So if we have the acid HCl, for instance, hydrochloric acid, this is a molecular compound. If I had a sample of pure HCl, it would be a bunch of HCl it would be a bunch of discrete HCl molecules. It wouldn't be a 3D lattice. So the reason why we name it sort of as if it's ionic is because for HCl to be acidic, it has to dissociate into H plus and Cl minus when it dissolves in water. So this is sort of the, the reason why acids are named the way they are. But they are definitely not ionic compounds. They are molecular. When you dissolve them in water, they become aqueous, which means that each of these ions is surrounded by water molecules. So there you go. There is how to name acids.